All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Fears video with Fat Phil. And in this video, guys, I want to do another FAQ. Um, this is a series I started where I'm just going to go through some of the questions I get asked in the YouTube comments or questions I see asked, whether it's on Facebook groups or different Discord servers, and just kind of bring it to your guys' attention, right? So we're going to get straight into this, guys. Um, I actually really enjoy doing these videos. I think they're a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys are enjoying them. Let me know if there's things you want to see answered in FAQ. And if you want to know like what meets FAQ requirements, guys, it's something that, you know, there's not a full video for, right? That there's not a full video's worth of content for it, but it's still a good question. Before we get into these questions, guys, you know the drill. We must first pay homage to our king, Wampa. If you guys want to see Wampa hit Relegate live on stream, all you need to do, get this channel to 5,000 subscribers, guys. We have eclipsed 2,400 subscribers already in the month of January. We still have so much time here, guys. Let's keep on pushing. Again, guys, remember, Wampa may not always be in our team, but he's always right here in our hearts. All right. So first question, I can't remember which of my viewers asked this, but they asked about Omegas. And they're like, hey, um, Phil, I'm running out of Omegas. Like, I'm not sure how to, you know, get more of them, right? Like, I have plenty of Zetas and not enough Omegas. So this is a great question because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about Omegas. So... You need 13 Omegas whenever you equip a Zeta, right? And I think it's 10 for a leadership or something like that or more. Um, yeah, 10 for a leadership, 13 for a unique. Um, and then you need like five for other abilities. The thing is, when you're early on in the game, right, where you're in that early and mid game, right, you don't want to equip every single Omega for every single character, right? Like you look at my Jedi Knight Guardian, like I don't have the full abilities on her. Um... Oops, I don't want light side. I want everything. You know, if I keep going over here, um, I do apologize if you guys hear cat noises. Um, we, you know, you guys know I don't edit. Um, Imperial Probe Droid looks same thing. No Omegas, right? So I do have a few characters where I haven't even equipped all of their Omegas because I don't use them enough, right? Because they're characters that I'm not getting enough use out of. You know, look, like I don't even have her leadership applied because I'm not going to be using her leadership. So... And this goes for all ability maps, but particularly with Omegas, because I do think that we're getting into this Omega crunch, where unless you've been playing for a long time, like myself, where you have so many banked up, you're going to run into these points where you're not going to have enough Omegas. So the best piece of advice I have for you guys is, if you're going through the journey guide and you're like, I'm never going to use Mob Enforcer, don't give Omegas to her abilities. Don't give Omegas to Jawa and, you know, uh, 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 as you guys love to hear me say, uh, you know, uh, 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 does not need Omegas to be good. So that's the way I would save them. There's no real good ways to farm them. Like I wouldn't spend your fleet currency on them. It's not worth it. Just something you accumulate naturally over time. And the best way to save them is not equip them on useless characters like Mob Enforcer and... Okay, it is very late and I'm going to make very silly noises from here on out. Um, So the next question I get asked a lot is... How long will it take me to get, and you guys love asking this, and I think it's like, and it's fun, right? It's always fun to ask it, but like, how long will it take me to farm Executor, Jabba, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren? And there's kind of three main pieces of, you know, information you need to think about, right? Number one is time. Not just like the time of, oh, how long does it take? Like, how much time are you willing to commit to this game? If you spend more time in game, you get better rewards, all that stuff you're going to go faster, right? That's number one is time. Number two is resources. And this is a combination of not only like, are you going to, you know, do you get first in fleet arena? Do you do well in GAC? Are you in a good guild, right? Those are all resources. And inside of that is if you spend money too. So if you spend money on resources, yes, that's going to increase the amount of time, you know, decrease the amount of time it's going to take for you, right? But number three is your efficiency. How are you using the resources? How are you going through the game and understanding what you need to do to get from point A to point B? If you're going through and you're buying stuff and you're like, oh, I'm getting Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, but you know what? I want to get, I don't know, Omega up to Relic levels because she's cool. It's going to take you longer to get Kylo. If you're not focused on your goal, it's going to take you longer. So you've got to be efficient. You've got to understand what are good things to purchase with those resources, right? Um, a perfect example, I actually found this when I was farming for uh, tickets for Lord Vader. So in the weekly shipments here, you can buy these ultimate mats. 
right? Where are they at? All right, so yeah, you can buy these ultimate mats and the, you know, for light side, right? They're the same price for dark. So it, it comes out to, you know, that it costs 10 crystals per relic mat, right? So, or per currency, right? 10 crystals for each of these, right? Which if you do energy refreshes, right? 50 crystals for an energy refresh. So if I get five currency, if I get five of those tickets for a 50 crystal refresh, I've, you know, broke even, right? So when you go and do that 100 refresh for crystals, which I used to do all the time, I was still doing that for Lord Vader, but you would have been better off buying this because this is saying, hey, I, I think I got 10 once or twice. I didn't have the greatest drops. But like I got a lot of eights, a lot of nines. And if I'm spending 100 crystals on that, I would have been better off buying these things. So understanding that the best way to be efficient is to do X, Y, Z to get to your goal, right? And this is, was a good example that I thought I would show you guys. Another good one I would say is I get asked, you know, is it worth uh, doing 100 crystal refreshes for Kyrotex? That's what it was. So for Kyrotex, is it worth doing 100 crystal refreshes? Guys, remember, we've got to do the math, right? It takes, you know, your Kyrotex come in at 28 crystals per piece, right? 28 crystals per Kyrotex. I think that's the math, right? It's 28 per. So when you go to farm that node with a 100 crystal refresh, you need to net four Kyrotex to make your money. So sometimes you might get four, sometimes you might only get two. So my advice is it's better to just do that math and understand that it's probably not as efficient to buy 100 crystal refreshes just for Kyrotex. If there needs to be another reason why you're doing it. So again, I want to bring that up. That's just another way to look at that, right? Is how long is it going to take you? Again, guys, remember, this is all about, you know, how long is it going to take you to get to a farm? It's, you know, how much time are you spending on the game, right? You know, how committed are you? How are you using those resources, which is the most important, or the resources, right? Just pure resources. And then how you're using those resources. Those are the three things, right? So time, resources, and efficiency. If you can combine all of those things, you will get through farms faster, even over people who are spending money and not as efficient as you if you're not spending. The last point I wanted to bring up, the last question that I thought was really good that I've seen a lot of people ask about is Grand Arena. And I want to use this current round, I guess, as a barometer for you guys. So I had a really good season. Um, I'm going to lace this with a lot of sarcasm when I say that it is shocking how much easier it is to compete when you're only down one or two Galactic Legends instead of two or three. Like, who would have thought that that was a thing, right? Um, but I want to show this round. And we'll go to the first one, right? So I lost this one. I got my, I got crushed here. Uh, made some really poor mistakes on this wall here. I 100% didn't even realize that this was the Phasmacron. I'm like, I'm dead serious, guys. I didn't even realize that this was Phasmacron. I will say, in my defense, in my defense, this was the night that my daughter was born. I had like a few minutes where I was going through and like speeding through GAC, and it took me forever to, until I finally figured out that it was Phasmacron. And by that point, it was too late. I wasn't clearing this guy's back wall. Um... So yeah, that was a lost round one. The next round, guys, was against a... Oh, I guess I'll go back here because I do want to show. Uh, he was a 9.8 million GP player against me with 8. So, you know, okay. And I did not have Lord Vader's ultimate for this season. It wasn't locked in until later. Uh, round two, I faced this guy here. And we full cleared him. And he got stuck. Nah, just kidding. He started attacking with like 15 minutes left. He just like ran out of time. He didn't drop a single battle. He was doing really well. He was definitely going to full clear me and at least give me a run for the score that I put down. Um, as far as account goes, guys, he had a pretty decent account here. And you guys will see where this is going. He had 10.5 million GP. Last guy here, uh, 9.2. He was the closest one to my galactic power. Still 1.2 ahead of me. And we ended up winning here. We got holds on our executor. I don't think I got holds anywhere else. Right? I know I didn't get any on my front wall. Uh, let's keep going through here. Yeah, nothing there. And I don't think I got anything back here either. Let's go through. I didn't even check. I don't think I did the full check through here. But I don't think. Yeah, 
So no holds on characters. But he then got stuck on the ships. Um, my negotiator did not get any holds. There it is. And executor held strong, right? We got two battles out of that and ended up winning. What I want to show you guys is that I actually dropped the battle on his Ben Solo and Ray team here. So I dropped a battle here and I kept on going. And this is the advice, right? Where was this leading? If you're still watching, you guys, you guys probably stayed for the most important piece of advice. Play your GAC, regardless of if you're outmatched, regardless of if you're outgunned, play your GAC. You drop a battle, keep going. The amount of times I 100% will say that I won this GAC because I didn't stop here, right? I, if I would have stopped here, he could have cleared and then I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to get through Ray. Like I dropped it. Like I don't have a chance anymore, right? That was how I was feeling. Like I dropped that battle and I was like, oh, this is over. He's going to one shot me. And this is why you play the GAC. He did not set, you know, he set decent fleets. But um, he left it to the executor counter, which like executor mirror match, which is so hairy. So, you know, guys, what I'm trying to say here, play your GACs. You never know when you're going to get an opponent like this guy here or this one where he just ran out of time, right? He didn't attack with enough time. He would have probably crushed the score with the amount of GP he had. But because he ran out of time, I got the win. So, again, just play your GACs. It, it, the match is not decided until that like final you know second goes away and use every little bit of time you have to ensure that you can do as good in GAC. So guys, that was the video, right? I want to do another FAQ where remember starting off with just like Omegas, right? Don't equip them to every single character. You don't need to only put them on the important things that you need for your roster. As you get on later down the road, like myself, you'll just start equipping them for fun literally because you don't have like you're not going to have other things to give them to right number two what guys was about how long it takes right to farm something and that question is so so complex and so unique to every single player but the, the three things you have to keep in mind are you know how much time are you committing to the game what are your resources both for like what you're getting naturally through the game and if you're going to be spending any money to increase that and then how you're using those resources right if you don't have a lot of resources, but you're at least efficient, you might be better than somebody who has a lot of resources and has no clue how to be efficient or isn't really spending that time. And then finally, guys, just play your GACs. GAC is so important now with the amount of crystals there. And you never know when you're going to get around like mine where you can end up with two wins just because one guy ran out of time and the other guy just didn't have as good of a strategy as us. But that's the video. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. As always, guys, I love every single one of you. May the force be with you. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.